Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela with Flip and Flutter Creations and today I'm going to bring you a Cricut Design Space tutorial on how to export your design so you can print them larger than a print and cut through Cricut Design Space. So let's check this out. Okay guys, so there are three different ways that I'm going to show you today on how to export your design. We're going to start with the first one which is super super simple. First of all, what I want to do is I want to take my design and I'm going to flatten it. Okay. So now that I have it flattened, my big problem is, is that Cricut Design Space only lets me do a print then cut that is 9.25 by, I think it's 6.75. So sometimes there might be things that we need to print that need to be larger than that size, especially if you do sublimation, like I do a lot of sublimation. So there are just things that you might need to cut that are a little bit larger. So for those times when maybe you design something in Cricut Design Space and you want to export it as a JPEG or export it as a PNG or a PDF, I'm gonna give you a couple different options here just so that you can use hopefully one of them to find something that's going to work on your computer and what with what programs that you have and for what your need might be. So the first one I'm gonna show you is very simple. It's actually using a screenshot of your computer screen. So the first thing you have to know is that whenever you are working in Cricut Design Space, these grids back here are optional. If you click over here by zero, zero, you can actually change your different grid lines behind there. So you can make it just where it's like one-to-one -one boxes or like the super grid lines that have every little box there, or you can make it blank. So you wanna take it and make it blank and then make it as large as it'll go for your, for your screen. Okay, so as large as it'll go for your screen. It really just depends on what computer you're on, how much space you're gonna to have to work with. I really wish they would make, a, make it to where we could drop these menus to the side and up and then pop them back out if we want to, kind of like the ribbon in Microsoft Word. I think that would be really helpful. But right now we don't have that. So just try to fill it as large as you can. Make sure you are not near this little button here that has your size showing. And then we're just going to use our snipping tool. Now I have mine down at the bottom of my screen. I keep it on my on my um, taskbar, my, my window there. But you can just type in your little white bar here and write snipping, ooh, if I could spell it right, snipping. And there it is. And you could just click on that to open it. Basically this takes a screenshot, but instead of taking a screenshot of your entire window, it lets you actually draw the square of what you want. And then you can just do that. And now here is my design. I'm going to click save. And I actually recorded this video already, but my I'm using my laptop instead of my big computer. And my program I'm using to record just did not allow, like the picture of me, I had myself in the corner. It was just, and my mouth kept it, it couldn't keep up with Cricut Design Space and the program. And so anytime I actually did any actions, it kept making it where my voice wasn't keeping up with the act or my my face wasn't keeping up with my voice. So I just went ahead and I'm going to re-record it. That's why you don't see my picture down in the corner right now, because I'm re-recording it just so at least I have the video available and I can get that loaded up for you guys this week. So. I'm just going to replace what I've already done here. I'm just going to click save. Doo, doo, doo. All right. Now I have my image. I'm going to bring it into Microsoft Word because that's just honestly the quickest and easiest way to bring in an image and just size it super quick. So I'm going to just open a blank document and I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to insert a picture from my device. And then I save that in my downloads. So I'm gonna go to downloads and then there it is, Kaylin. So we're just going to insert that. Now, one of the things you're gonna wanna do, I like to change it to where it's over the top. And then this does have a background behind it. So you're going to, what I do is I just type in a word, make it kind of large. Then what I do is I can see that there's a background here. So what I'm gonna do is if you double click on the picture, you click color, 
and you have the little menu scroll down to set transparent color. You then would click in any anywhere that you want to be transparent. For me, I want the white to be transparent. Now, the nice thing is I have nothing that comes all the way to the edge. So the white, it, it got every single thing. And you can tell because you can see hello through there. So it's now a transparent background. So I could remove the hello and then I could resize this. Oh, I hate when it does this. There we go. So I can now resize this. Now, before I resize it, though, I do want to crop out the extra bits that I screenshotted. So just make sure you don't accidentally cut out any words or like the bottom of your Y or, you know, whatnot. That way now your box goes just very close around the edge. So when you're resizing, you're not just getting a bunch of empty white space. So then maybe I want to size it to, I want it to be eight inches wide. Okay. So that's up to you. You just decide how you want it to print. If you have an Epson 2720, you can actually print eight and a half by 14 or even longer if you want. But I only have, I have eight and a half by 11 and I have eight and a half by 14 paper. So then you can print it to that size and ta-da. Don't forget if you don't have your settings already set to automatically mirror your image, don't forget to mirror your image before you print. Okay, so let's do the next option. Now, the next option we have is to make this design we have it, I like to make it the largest you can go, which was 9.25 on the largest size side. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm gonna do, and it's already flattened, so it when you flatten it, it automatically makes it a print thin cut. So, and I selected all of my items there in order to flatten it together. You don't have to group it first or any of that. When you select the whole image, it will flatten it all together as one piece. So here is my item. It keeps saying I have, I don't know why they keep doing that. It's not true. The font is on my computer, but I don't know. So now I have my print and cut ready. You'll notice I am not going to mirror. And that is because I already have my defaults in my Epson 2720 set to mirror anything that I print. So I do not need to mirror, but if you need to mirror, make sure that you do so, okay? Um, don't forget to mirror that if you're gonna, if you wanna, if your printer's not set that way, that'll just make it easier when you pull it into Word not to accidentally forget. So I don't have my machine connected, but you don't need it to be connected if you're just printing. So I'm gonna click send to printer. Now, very important, I do not want the bleed. So turn your bleed off just by selecting that. And once it pops up my printers, I am going to show you two different options. Number one, if you have Adobe Pro, which I have Adobe Pro, I can actually export this to an Adobe PDF, which I'm gonna do while I'm talking. I can export this to an Adobe PDF. And then what I can do is save it as a JPEG or a PNG from there. And I'm just going to save over my file. It's gonna open it up here. And if I only need a PDF, this is perfect. This is a great way to do it. You can just export it and you're done but you may want to size it to different sizes. So in that case, you'd want it to be an image so you could bring it into like Microsoft Word or if you have Inkscape or something like that. Okay, so here's my design. It's exported to a PDF, very nice. Now I could come up here in Adobe Pro and I could export it to an image, oops. I didn't mean to do that. I accidentally unclicked off of the Kaylin file. Okay, so I can export it to image and then do JPEG or PNG. PNGs are always nice because you can remove that background, but honestly, I think in Microsoft Word, you could do it with the JPEG as well. So you have all these options. You can also export it to Microsoft Word, but I'm not really sure if it will let you edit it the way it will an image. So I would just go with the image. And then once you have it exported as an image, you would do exactly what we just did here, where we imported it and we recite, we took the background out, we made sure to crop it down. You would need to crop out those black lines that you see here and then, you know, go through the exact same steps I just showed you. So that is Adobe PDF. Now we're gonna pretend that we're sending it to the printer again, but we're gonna choose a different PDF printer instead. 
But first, let's take off that bleed while we wait on the printers to load. And now instead, we're going to use a program called Bullzip PDF. And I'll show you where to find this in just a moment. And then we're going to go ahead and print this. Now, the nice thing about Bullzip PDF printer is that it doesn't just print to PDF. It's actually going to give me an option when it pops up the window here that's going to let me choose to print it to a JPEG or a PNG or any other option that you can think of. There's a whole bunch of them. So here we go. Option, I don't have any default set. So right now it's defaulting to PDF, but we can change it to whatever we'd like. I wanna change it to a PNG. I'm also gonna change where it is showing up well, not where it's showing up, but I'm going to change the name, Kaylin, and we're going to call it Kaylin3 because I think this is the third time I have actually exported this file. Just make sure you know where it's actually going, and you can change that by clicking the buttons. But I'm going to go ahead and just let it go to my desktop. That's fine. And then I'm going to put open the document after creation because I just want to see it when it's done. And then click Save. There are some other options in the other tabs there that you could have clicked on. But some of the items there are grayed out because they're for the pro version. Like if you want it to make your file a high quality instead of maybe a little bit lower quality than what you could get, it is a paid version. So I don't have the paid version, so I don't really mess with any other settings. Okay, so now we have our picture. This is a picture file. You could go ahead and crop it now if you want it to, to crop out those black lines and get it as close to the image as possible. So that's one less step you have to do in Microsoft Word, or you could just bring it into Microsoft Word and do it exactly how we did with that first file, where you just bring everything up as close to the edges as possible without accidentally cropping out any ears or anything. There we go. And then I just save. I don't save a copy because I want to, I don't want to have multiple files. Oops, I did accidentally cut off that Y, but this is just an example. So now I would just do the exact same thing. I would come in here, I'd go insert from my device in Microsoft Word, and I saved that one on my desktop, Kaylin3. There it is. It's already got the, um, the cropping done, but I still need to adjust that, that um, remove that background. So again, I'm just going to go in here to color, set transparency color, and click on that background. And you could do the little hello test again. And then again, you just double click it and size it what size you want it to be and print it as you normally would. So those are your three options there. Let me show you where you find the bull zip. Oops, I forgot I closed it up. So I just Googled when I was looking the first time for this, I Googled bull zip PDF printer and you can just click on bullzip.com and you can download the PDF printer. Now I've already downloaded mine, so I'm not gonna actually click on download but you can download it here um, so that you can get those different options. Now, there are some paid options. I just have whatever the free version is right now that I haven't had to pay for yet. I don't know if I'll eventually have to pay for it. I actually didn't look at that. Um, I think that you can have the one that I'm using right now free just for good. Um, I think if you want these other versions you have to buy them so there's that um but just for what you need it for right now not having to let's see i'm trying to see real quick yeah so it's a free pdf printer so it is free it's just if you want some of the extra features you have to purchase it but for just needing to export as a jpeg it's it works just fine doing it what we just did and it may have come out a little cleaner than the first one we did with the with the zip, with the snipping. I can't really tell which which one came out as a cleaner image. But either way, now we have our image, and now we can print it or use it in some other fashion that we might need to do that where we need to print it larger than what Cricut Design Space gives us the option for at this time. Hopefully, they will eventually change it to where at least you can print on an eight and a half by 11. That would be wonderful. I hate wasting paper and it drives me crazy. So I hope Cricut will take that to heart. I know a lot of people have been asking for that. So hopefully we'll see that eventually. But for those of us that sublimate, we still have the issue of 
Maybe we need to print in the wide format. Maybe you have a printer that prints 13 by 19 or you have the eight and a half by 14 paper and you want to be able to print to it, then, you know, of course you're going to still need this option as a way to export your design. So there you have it. There's a couple different ways that once you've designed in Cricut Design Space, because let's be real, sometimes it is easier to, to design in Cricut. Even for me, I design a lot in Photoshop or Illustrator. And there are times I still would rather go into Cricut and design because I'm so much more familiar with it. And it's just a little bit more user friendly and easy to create what I want to create quickly without having to go through like five steps sometimes. So sometimes I still go ahead and use Cricut Design Space to design items, but then realize, ugh. I need that elsewhere. So here's your little workaround. Now, if you have any other options and you have some ideas of how we could export our designs that I didn't share here, please feel free to drop them below in the comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you have any other ideas for us, the more the merrier and the more options we have to choose from is always a good thing because what works for one person might not work the best for others. So please feel free to share. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you thought it was helpful. And don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that bell so that you can be notified when I post my next video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.